Hello, I'm Shelley Kramer, Principal Analyst at Futurum Research, and I am coming to you today from sunny Orlando here at Enterprise Connect 2023, where I am joined by Samir Abankur with Salesforce. Samir is the Director of Product Management for Service Cloud Einstein. He did a fabulous keynote at Enterprise Connect today, and so I grabbed him <laughs> and and convinced him to talk with us a little bit about some of the things that he hit on his keynote. So welcome, it's great to have you, and thank you for making time. Thank you, Shelley, for giving me the opportunity to be here. I'm really honored. Absolutely, well, I'm looking forward to it. So your keynote today was on Einstein GPT for the Contact Center. Yeah. Now, one thing that we have talked about fairly extensively is that across this convention center, generative AI, chat GPT, all of uh, things related to AI yeah. <laughs> are the buzzwords of the day, right? Yeah. So you can't have a conversation with anybody without talking about AI. Right. But that tells you how important it is. I think yeah. important it is for business today. So explain to us if you would, what is Einstein GPT? Yeah, so let's take a step back first, okay. right? Like really understand where customers are coming from today, right? There, we have a larger problem from a contact center perspective. Businesses are struggling. We know what the last how the last two years have been right. with uh, businesses, with customers. They are asking for more. Uh, customers keep asking for more, and they want to do it. Uh, and businesses want to do it with uh, in an efficient manner. Right. Like contact centers doing doing more with less is exactly. I think the theme That's the of twenty twenty three. Exactly, and everybody here I talk to at yes. Enterprise Connect. Are, they're asking about, hey, how can I make my contact center efficient? And everybody's, as you said, are talking about generative AI, and they are saying, hey, is there an opportunity for us? I think the bigger, uh, the bigger lens that we need to look at is open AI or any other vendor is going to give you great recommendations uh, from a large language model perspective. But how do you ground them? How do you ground those recommendations in the customer's knowledge? Well, and the customer journey, too. Exactly, because you don't, how do you create a differentiation based on products that are given by other competitors as well, right? Because everybody wants to integrate with LLM or right. uh, OpenAI. So that's where I think the differentiation from Einstein GPT comes from is we want to target in the first phase, target use cases that are going to be the low hanging fruit for our customers. When we listen to our customers, we are trying to enable some of the most compelling uh, features, if you will, and I'll talk about it in a, in a minute. And how do you incorporate large language models? That's one aspect. The other aspect is grounding those recommendations on the customer's database. That's where the differentiation of Einstein GPT will come from, from a product standpoint. And the features that we are really targeting as part of this, you know, the key, uh, uh, keynote that we anu announced is focusing on replies. Okay. How do you assist the agent in um, not only getting replies from a product which is which is centered to your um, your business, mm -hmm. versus also looking at um, reply generating replies which are which we are getting from the public cloud. So, for example, if I want to know about a weather jacket temperature, uh, for example. I can go into my product database and figure out, okay, the weather jacket that you're wearing is rated for this temperature. But if the customer asks you, hey, I, I'm going to, you know, Grand Teton for skiing, can that, you know, what is the weather like there? But that data can come from the, pu from the public cloud, right. from the large language model. So that's the merger that we want to kind of bring as part of Einstein GPT is, how do you take from a conversation standpoint and bring much more relevance? That's one aspect. The second would be more how we can drive productivity, and I'll speed it up here. So from a bot perspective, how can we actually help generate bots on the fly with Einstein GPT? How can we bring, uh, not bot should not be like a predetermined response, but more you want to build character to it. You want to be informal in the responses, more human-like responses. Yeah, you That's don't what, want people to be exactly. communicating knowing that you're, it's exactly. better if you don't feel like you're communicating exactly. with them. It feels like exactly. personalized. And not only that, but we want to test the bot. Today, yeah. it takes hours to go and test the bot. Right. So we can, with G GPT, we can actually do the testing and deployment and do analytics on top. So that's kind of the capability that we are going after. 
I like it. You know, so I was going to ask you about use cases that customers are are asking for, but I feel like you've kind of already covered that. Yeah, to, as part of the announcement degree. that we kind of, you know going after is really looking at how we can help customers um, ground the knowledge, like take the responses that we have achieved and ground that into customer database. Right, that's where the differentiation is coming from. So that's uh, that's something we feel that is a direct uh, AHD savings. Right. for a contact center because now the agents don't have to type the responses, right? Oh, we, that's wonderful. Yeah, because now we just, we give you the response, uh, informal, formal, whatever that may be, uh, and then drop them into your into your chat. Or And this experiences can be scaled across uh, any digital channel, not only your chat or messaging in app and web or okay. Facebook or WhatsApp. We, we want to expand to other channels as well. And can you slide, you know, can you pick your functionality more formal, moderately formal, exactly. that sort of thing, so you can kind of pick the voice exactly. that you're interested exactly. in? So that's kind of what we yeah. do as part of the replies is we kind of give you, hey, I want like a, you know, very informal response or yeah. I know this customer is like, you know, chatty customer, it's, it's okay, but I there might be a customer who's much more formal engagement, so you want a more formal response. And this this use case can actually expand to even email generation. Okay. Now, what do you, you want to do email follow-ups, right? Email can take quite a bit of time right. to write, right? Five to seven minutes for an average email, right? right? Now, with uh, Einstein GPT, you can even generate emails as this is our next step going forward, is how we can use customer data and public data to kind of build that customized email response so agents can do a quick follow-up. So more personalized. Exactly. Um, you know, more personalized, more productive, yeah, yeah. more, you know, and I think that um, we might have chatted about this a little bit earlier this morning, but I think that, you know, one of the conversations that we're seeing a lot is sort of agent experience, exactly. right? I mean, yeah. a call center job, this is hard work, you know? I yep. mean, generally speaking, you're not dealing with people on their best days. You're dealing with yes. people who have an issue, who have sometimes more pressing than others, depending on, you know, the situation. And so really things that can, that are designed to help empower agents and to make their jobs less of a heavy load, exactly. I think is really... And effective. that's what we are shooting for. We want to take the mundane tasks from the agent right. and make it more automated so they can focus on the customer conversation yeah. because that's where the key is. If you focus on the customer, if agent is focused on the customer, then your CSAT will go up, Yeah. right? That's what we are driving for, to right. make sure that agents are focused on customer conversation. That will help give them like much more personalized engagement uh, to the customer mm -hmm. and they walk away happy. Everybody wins. Right. Yeah, everybody it's, wins. It's a win-win. I have a question yeah. about the functionality and and this may or may not be something that you're you're able to do, mm -hmm. but um, have, so you can pick the tone, right? The more formal, Correct. the moderately formal, that sort of thing. Yeah. Is there a way to, or have you done any testing like with certain customers against, this is um, sort of what happened when we used a more formal tone, this is what happened when we warmed it up, and help customers come to um, come to a place where you can help advise them on what the no most effective tone is? Do you do that kind of thing? Um, so I realize are, that's an obscure question, but I yeah. think about weird things. Yeah, so <laughs> uh, I think, so this is currently we are in testing. Okay. We, are, we are in pilot phase, because uh, right now our goal is to kind of ha hand this over to our customers and get that feedback. Yeah. For us, it's very important to know what works versus not, especially when it comes to generative responses. Right. So we are tr going to track which responses are actually going to make more sense for yeah. the customer and uh, get that analytics across the board to say, okay, what is really what resonating? Works. Is it more formal kind of language that is resonating as part of the product? Then we might surface yeah. that to our customers yeah. more than the informal one. So yeah. there is some analytics that needs to be done as part of uh, you know pilot customers that we are currently recruiting for okay. this uh, for this capability. So hopefully we'll get more details. Okay, great. Is this um, generally available or is it in beta right now? No, right now it's in pilot. Okay. Uh, so it's not beta yet. Okay. So it's in pilot. So we okay. are recruiting customers and a lot of customer interest there. Oh, I'm sure. Uh, in you know getting on on board on this Einstein GPT yeah. technology. Oh, absolutely. Um, so my last question is, so somebody's listening to this conversation, watching this conversation and thinking, oh, 
okay, this sounds really interesting and it sounds like something I could use. What do they think, like where do they get started beyond just, oh, go to Salesforce. But, but when you're thinking about beginning on a journey yeah. to up level what's happening in your contact center and beyond your, your customer experience and everything, wh where do you start thinking about this? I think I would kind of take a bigger step back and think about where, does, where do you start with your customer? and go across and map that as a customer journey. Okay. Really think from an end-to-end -end view of, okay, my customer started in sales, then you know, went to marketing, or then went to commerce, then went to you know, service. So I think this is, of course, I'm biased from Salesforce perspective, but that's kind of, I would say, from a customer uh, experience perspective and customer journey perspective, I would recommend to start from there and see how do you want to how do you want your cu customer experience to look like? And then think technology next. Yeah, I think uh, ten we tend to kind of, you know, sometimes jump on the bandwagon to say, oh, there is another XYZ technology. I want to make sure that it's on my platform. Right. And then what happens is we create fragmentation mm -hmm. because we don't have a single solution. Our data is all splattered all over the place. Right. And we cannot tell that customer story. What happened with John Doe starting from, you know, journey X to you know journey Z, right? We can't get, we can't tell a complete picture. So I think that's where I would, you know, before even coming to Salesforce, yeah. I would kind of think about, hey, map customer, that map that out and see what really works for you, uh, works, and then uh, think about, hey, what is the product offering that you know um, you have across the board, and see what fits best. You know, I think that, um, well, I've spent a lot of my career as a strategist, so yeah. I, of course that resonates with me, start with a plan, right? Yeah. Um, I think that from a personal experience, and I feel like we've all had this happen, yeah. but you know, when you're navigating your way through a customer service experience, and again, nobody wakes up ever yeah. thinking, I can't wait to reach out to customer service to solve this problem that I have, right? right? So right. you're kind of irritated to begin with. Yep. Um, but so many times when I am immersed in that process, yep. I find myself thinking, no one from senior leadership has ever walked <laughs> through this process because if they had, yep. this process would, would not, not exist. exist completely. So, so I think that that's also an important part of this uh, this customer journey mapping is really understanding um, beyond just looking at what's on the paper, like really walking through every step of the process and exactly. testing it and making sure that everybody on the team really understands exactly. what is happening with yeah. that customer. And then map the technical solutions to it, right? yeah. what really solves and in a much, much more effective way yeah. right? rather yeah. than creating tech debt for your organization <laughs> it makes it makes perfect sense yep. well Samir Evankar from Salesforce thank you so much for joining me today you've been fantastic I really enjoyed your keynote I'm so glad you were able to make time for me and I'm looking forward to having this come out of pilot and yep. being able to play with it. And I'm sure there are lots of people thinking just like me. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Absolutely. Bye-bye. Yeah. Bye. -bye. Bye.